Welcome to From the Ashes, the Dungeon Crawler Network podcast all about Ashes of Creation by Intrepid Studios. Bear witness to the rebirth of the MMO RPG genre from the ashes of an industry that's left the gamers behind. I am a jealous. How's everyone doing tonight? It's kind of weird. <laughs> I know. I miss your uh, silky smooth intro. I miss it. It's great. I'm telling you. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah. That voice you hear right there is the one, the only Crowjack. How are you, buddy? You have no proof of this. I mean, people are well, listening to this on a podcast. They don't know it's me. How do they know it's me? <laughs> Technically, you're not even the one and only Crowjack because you have multiple mm. Crowjack channels. So <laughs> shut up. That is true. So, that is true. So. Quit hitting me with logic. <laughs> you and your good goodness. logic. <laughs> and Alpha Soul, how are you, mate? Good. What's up, guys? Let's get the show on the road. Oh, you, come on now. It's been a while since I've been on a show. You got to ease me into it a little Alpha's bit. You're too just chill. trying to go hard and fast right at the beginning. We got bullet we points, go. man. We got bullet points. <laughs> we got things to talk about. We got stuff to do. <laughs> right, 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 right. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and jump right on into the show. We're going to jump into some general game news, first and foremost, which is pretty cool. The next gen of all of you console peasants out there, you'll soon have new land to toil over. Hey, that's hey what I consoles it. are fun. Yeah, Animal yeah. Crossing is on a console. I know. I have it for my son. It's fantastic. <laughs> Mm. I uh, I just recently got to play Horizon Zero Dawn just because it That's had fun. you know they just released it on PC. Uh, man, that was a good game, and I I I really think that I messed up by going Xbox this time around. Yeah. But this this next gen, I'm going P on PlayStation. I'm actually um, if I'm doing a next gen console, I might go Xbox for a specific reason. Oh yeah, well, maybe, maybe we'll touch on that later. Oh, well, that's mm, true. Okay, okay, yeah. maybe, maybe we'll touch on that later. Um, right. Unless unless I win a uh, another console from uh, yeah. Bethesda, like I did the last time. Hint, hint, Zenimax. Anytime wait, wait. you want to take care of That's that. Nice. I don't know what I will end up going with. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm really torn when it comes to consoles. Honestly, the only reason why I even have a console now in the first place was because I won one. Netflix. Um, you know, it's great for yes. Netflix. It's great. It is a Netflix box. It's but a good job. I have, I have uh, found a few P or console titles that I like, which, like you mentioned, Horizon Zero Dawn. You know, sometimes it might be worth it because there are some console specific, specifically with PlayStation. We'll get yeah. to Xbox a little later. That's a little bit of a, a, a gray area. But uh, PlayStation have exclusives that generally don't come to pc uh yep. what was what was the other one called uh innocence or something like that that was oh cool. yeah plague something uh plague tale a plague, yeah, tale. plague tale yeah yeah final I fantasy that... no there's lots final... yeah well final fantasy has actually been going to pc recently but yeah for a lot of years it was only there or like so. the new uh number seven remake i don't think it's on pc is it no, no. number seven remake isn't on pc yet Not but yet. To Jealous's point, it does. They eventually get to PC. It's just, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they, I think they will. Um, generally, what I, what I feel like is happening, which we'll see as we go further on, mm -hmm. is these companies make exclusive deals for a specific period of time, yep. where PlayStation is going, hey, Square, Square, Enix, I'll give you X amount of money to release your Final Fantasy game on our console only for six months. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not, you know, a, an in perpetuity type deal. No. It's a X amount used of months. To be. Yeah, could have been. It used to be. Used to be. Used to, used be. to be. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think that's, that's where, and, and that is a big source of income right off the bat, you know, mm -hmm. especially if they don't know if the game is going to fail terribly, because guess what? Sometimes they do. Hmm. And, and mm -hmm. locking in that we're going to pay you X amount of money gets, well, at the very least, we've recouped some of our investment costs yeah so. that's true all right anyway let's move on to the next little bit of news unless you guys have anything else you want to say about those oh i do uh good luck getting a ps5 they sold out in like what <sighs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah Man, they, they're they're gone <laughs> bots the bots doing the uh, scripting to get in there and order like 10 instances of it so they can flip them for yeah. the playstation for the xbox for the the new series oh. of graphics cards, all of yeah, it is just cards. rampant. 
Yeah. yeah I have an out. order in for a 3080, but it's sitting on the Amazon uh, checkout going, hey, we will ship it to you when we get one. Right. Mm. Thanks. I think, was it Amazon or no? Was it Amazon or Best Buy? I can't remember. One of those actually had to release a statement going, we got all your orders. Yeah. But it's going to be, you know, sorry, you know. And the bonds are so bad. Even NVIDIA has released um, a statement saying, hey, we're actually going over the orders with a fine tooth comb to try and find these these botting kind of accounts and to stop them from uh, mm-hmm. doing their transactions. That's how bad it is. Because mm-hmm. you right. know what you're going to see. The day it's going to come out, you're going to see a PS5 on eBay for like $8,000. Oh, yeah, and for you, sure. Yeah. I'm all for the hustle. I'm all for the, the, the arbitrage, right? Buy low, sell high. I'm all for that. But scripting it so that you buy 10 instantly with 10 different instances of uh, account open, it just, it's too far. It's too far. Yeah. Right. No, it's, it's definitely wrong and it's, it's a mess because it, it's price gouging. And I mean, that's technically speaking, that scalping process is illegal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, especially with sports tickets and things of like that yep. nature. That is yeah. an illegal practice because they do yep. see it. It's predatory. Definitely predatory Absolutely. right off the bat. But in an age of anonymity of the internet, people get away with a lot of things they probably shouldn't. Mm-hmm. So, hey, maybe you don't have to worry podcast. about having a PS5 because Microsoft just bought Bethesda. So guess what? Elder Scrolls games may not even be on the PlayStation 5, so there you go, Xbox. You might have won one. Finally. That's why I might be getting an Xbox. over a P- We have a PS4 right now. We've had one for years. I think when they first leaked or first announced they were doing the Final Fantasy VII remake, my wife and yep. I, both big Final Fantasy fans, like, oh my god, we have to get a PS4. We bought the PS4, and then, what, three years later they release it, so we've had the PS4. Uh, it's done plenty of Netflix, like I said, but mm-hmm. we finally have seven, so that's kind of cool. But Oops. the next one, if I do, because of that, that exclusivity with, uh, with uh, Skyrim. No, not Skyrim, but uh, Elder Scrolls Six is very well, interesting to me. But, but give me this. Why, I'm curious of why you guys are looking at that when, like, I think it would be a no-brainer. You'd play it on PC as opposed to true. Like, the, uh, true, true, true. We would. You know what I mean? We, I we would, would too. Right, right. I, yeah. Yes, we would. We yeah. would. I'm not sure about others, but, I mean, whenever I have the choice, Unless it's, let me think, unless it's like a fighting game, I will almost always choose, well, not oh, even a sure. fighting game, I'll, you know, just pick up a controller and use my controller as input. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, mm. yeah. But no, like, cause the gra- cause, because of my line of work, I always try to have the best equipment possible. So when Elder Scrolls Six is released and I have a 6080, because it's going to be forever from now when it comes out. Yeah, I'll want to do it on PC, especially if they allow modding like they do for Skyrim, because the Skyrim mods mm. took Skyrim to the next level for like graphical updates and, and, and cosmetics and, and, and quality of life stuff. It made Skyrim very cool. So I'm hoping mm. the sequel will also have those kinds of uh, oh, modding yeah. allowed. Yeah. Right. Well, but you know, as we talked about um, earlier, because we have the PC, but PC actually, it's, it's odd that you mentioned that because PC actually is starting to become the minority market in gamers. Yes Seriously? and no. Yes and no. I was going to say, I thought it was going to die. Like I thought six years ago, uh. eight years ago, I thought it was on the way down to die. But then streaming and streamers have turned PC into a more desirable thing. And on top of that, you have all these amazing components for your PC that can be RGB'd out and people have to show off their builds. I feel like PC is having a bit, of a, a bit of a renaissance, a bit of a re- resurrection from where it was going, where it was trending, mm. because we have gaming on your phone and gaming on your Xbox and the graphics are so good. But because of streaming and content creation, I think PC is not going to die anytime soon. Yeah, but doesn't Twitch integrates easily with your PlayStation now? True, but the, the quality of the stream is garbage. Watching a, P, uh, a PlayStation streamer, unless they're literally a PC streamer and also have a PlayStation plugged in and set up, like it's just not the same kind of experience. You're right. But let, let's, let's also look at that. Um, the cost of a console oh, for versus... Sure. For remember, sure. for a streaming PC, yeah, if you need a streaming PC that does a bunch of stuff like you and I do, yeah, you're spending money. Yep. But if you're just using it as a streaming box, you can get away with like a $300 PC it's in true. order to... Just to yeah. run OBS, and you need a C, a good, a half decent CPU, and then any garbage bin graphics card you can find, and boom, you have yeah. a streaming PC. Absolutely. Yeah. So right, right. you can get away with let's 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 look at the cost for streaming mm. at this point. 
breakdown console 500 bucks yep. streaming mm-hmm. pc let's say 400 bucks sure good mic and webcam let's 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 webcam, be generous you can go cheap. mike you go better yeah let's let's do 300 dollars mic because you're saying you want to go professional 100 dollars. there's another yep. 400 bucks Yep. You're looking at thirteen hundred dollars. Can you build a PC for thirteen? I mean, I can, but there's no you monitors. Can build there's no other good PC. <laughs> yeah, you can build a solid PC yeah, for thirteen hundred. Yeah. A thirty uh, a thirty XX series Nvidia card is thirteen hundred dollars. Yeah, the thirty eighty. Yeah, yeah. The thirty eighty this gen is actually uh, only seven hundred, but the thirty ninety, which is a Titan replacement, that's a, a fourteen hundred dollar graphics card. Yeah. So right there, you got a a, a good stream oh, yeah, sure. setup. For thirteen hundred bucks, and I'm and I'm saying that's above and beyond. How many people are spending three hundred bucks on a mic? They probably won't. They'll they'll buy a no. Yeti, which is ninety bucks. Yeah. Yeah. they'll buy Almost a snowball. Yep. You know, you're you're looking at under a thousand for what would be considered a a decent stream yeah. setup, better than average. You're, you Absolutely. know, the the higher end, upper upper middle class streaming setup, yep. if that's what you wanted to. So Absolutely. yeah. There's there's a lot with that. So, but yeah. to counter your point of of PC trending going down, um, components, monitors, keyboards, uh, graphics cards, CPUs, just all this stuff, uh, cases, everything's being sold like crazy. Especially since the start of the pandemic, uh, all these these pieces of hardware have been going off the shelves. Like they're having a hard time keeping up with demand right now. It's crazy. Well, that's because everything was made in China, and guess what? China's not doing. <laughs> It's not, it's not just a lack of supply. <laughs> it's an increase in demand as well. Come on. Although, yeah, I, I do think to your point, though, from a development aspect, it is easier to develop for a a set system like a PS uh, PS Five yeah, or the new you, Xbox Series. You know series. the power. You've got yeah, the yeah. power. Well, I mean, not just the power, but you just you don't have you don't have to plan against X amount of configurations, and yeah. even you know, even in testing and going through things like that. Yeah, for Ashes, they're going to have to prepare for the potato and the supercomputer. Right. Yeah. They're going to have to get everything in between. And by the time Ashes comes out, my computer will be the potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought a PC a while ago specifically yep. for Ashes, and now, you know, that was clock foolish. is ticking. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking and up And I'm going to have to get another one. So, so I'm thinking to myself, yeah. why don't I just wait till the 6080? And then, bam, Ashes will be out and I'll have the 6080. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Damn. sitting here going every day that goes by, more sprouts are coming up with my potato. It's about time to <laughs> split it in half and start planting again. <laughs> All right. That was a fun discussion. Let's go ahead and look at what we else we got on the notes. Oh, Baldur's Gate 3 is out okay. next week. I haven't played Baldur's Gate in ages. I just saw the trailer today. Dark Alliance. Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, my God. That trailer was gorgeous. Yeah. Anyone remember playing Dark Alliance with your friends like mm-hmm. 15, 20 years ago? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would have been. This is our very hardcore. Like, yeah. The hardcore yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2.0 slash 3.0 nerd in me was freaking out over the Mind Flayer in the trailer and 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 and, and the, the spell jammer. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm fine. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, there, there was a, a lot of nostalgia for me because my best friend and I used to actually go over to each other's houses, spend like an entire weekend, hook up the yep. PS2 because that's what it was on, and Dark play Alliance, Dark Alliance. Baby. Yeah, one and two, one right after the other. I like the Moon Elf Necromancer. I think we would do that. Favorite. We would do like Gauntlet Legends. Any of those kind of like dungeon crawling co op kind of games are great. Just great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It was great. So that is coming out, and I know, and actually. There's there's something specific with this company. The company who did this, what who is it? Do you remember who Larian, it is? It's Larian Studios, I think. Mm-hmm. Um they they're the ones who did, I think I think Divinity. they're yeah, Divinity Original Sin. Which is a cult classic. Like it's it's hugely popular for what it is. Oh yeah, it's a fantastic game. One of the one of the best, basically. Mm. Right. Awesome. Let's go ahead and move it into the Ashes of Creation news because we do have some stuff coming up. We have a live stream on Wednesday, September 30th, starting at 1 p.m. I'm assuming that's Eastern time. Um, Why Wednesday? So, you know, that's weird. Why Wednesday? Just it's weird. It's an odd date. Don't they normally do it on Fridays? They do. Normally on Fridays, yeah. Sometimes yeah. on, yeah, normally on Fridays, actually. Yeah. Just point that out. Is there a holiday on the 2nd? No. There's no, not in like. October, 12. November, October. Yeah. There's no yeah, national holiday. Huh. Yeah, just, just an odd thing odd. to notice. 
Maybe just aligned with their schedule or something. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah, it's hard to have a schedule when you're working at home. I mean, yeah. <laughs> tell me what. Yeah. The two year old and <laughs> yeah. Right. And with the weather changing and everyone starting to bundle up and come inside from all their summer COVID activities, which was literally just sitting inside and wishing you could go outside anyway, but you couldn't. Yep. Now you get to sit inside and hope that within the next three months, we got Alpha One because Alpha One was announced to begin around fall. Yes. Yeah. So anytime. Year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm hoping sooner than later. I'm right. hoping sooner than later. We are supposed to have some uh, some testing coming up, and if that goes well, maybe we'll be in luck. I don't know. We'll wait and see. We're, we're we'll see. No, yeah, we're. I think there's. Yeah, we're allowed to. Have they talked about? No, no, the no. NDA? We cannot. We cannot. No, they have not. Okay, they haven't I'm, actually discussed any of that yet. We're just speaking right. in vagaries here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're <laughs> yeah. talking about either. I mean, it, it's sort of disingenuous because they're obviously going to have. The, the high end people testing. Yeah. At yeah. some point. Like, I mean, that, the high end people had a test. That is uh, this not a break of any NDA because that's actually, they said from the Kickstarter that all the high end backers would have access to all testing before it went to open of any kind. Mm-hmm. So to yeah. be under the assumption that the high end backers are not getting in early, you are deluding yourself because. Yeah, that's, that's just foolhardy. That, yeah, yeah. that you could go back to what Steven said at the very beginning of Kickstarter and all of that fun that was stuff. Like so, three years ago now. It was. It was just, a very long time ago. Three years ago. Getting so excited now, about this thing. Man. Alpha One. I, wanna, I actually want to, before we, we move on to anything else, because this is actually something that's really important um, and something people are really looking forward to. Because I started seeing the hype for this game start going up a lot, specifically with several YouTubers who started to relook at some of the live streams. And I started to see the resurgence mm. in, in interest from the general populace outside. Uh, because you had Asmongold um, doing a stream. Shroud. You had Shroud Summit. doing a stream. Summit doing a stream. Mm. Um, Even Tim the Tapman. Interviewed Steven. Yeah, yeah. He got some interviews in there with those really, really big streamers. And that really pumped up um, the the perception of Ashes. And then now also with their live stream and them actually showing gameplay that they're playing. Yes. It, it's really sparked. So now that we're getting close to Alpha 1, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I actually am going to steal from the discussion list. Guess what? I'm pulling an executive yeah. guest move and pulling from that. Go nuts. You guys hope- fine. What are you guys hoping we see with Alpha 1? Alpha, you go first. Alpha, you've played the Alpha 1 already, so you, you go first and you, you talk about what you want to see in this next one. Uh, I think for me, I'm, I'm looking at... I, I know this is going to sound weird, but I'm looking to see how the systems start tying into themselves, right? Really? Yep. Uh, because what I'm most concerned with is A, will... Will the game kind of function within itself, right? Now that we're allowed to talk about New World to some degree, you mm-hmm. know, one of the things, you know, um, Agelos that, you know, we saw when we were in New World was, yes, it was completely open PvP at that time, but the world did not sustain itself, right? Um, right. The player base would eat itself alive, and that's what they did, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you'd basically, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, I love PvP, but... You know, if you don't do it right, your population will literally devour itself. If there's not enough sheep, you know, the wolves will eventually turn on each other and nobody will be left to play your game, right? That's my worry. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was actually going to say, it's a very poignant statement that you made because of the systems and how this works. Because let's face it, people get very attached to their online personas, their Mm -hmm. online items. The stuff. Yeah, they're housing, and oh, yeah. cities can yeah. be burnt down, like you said. Yeah. And it, it I, I don't want to pull in too many with world war politics, and I'm not going to. But you can obviously say there's obviously people out there who want nothing more to watch the world burn just because yeah, they yeah. like to. Yeah, this very, there will um, be groups of people who will go around burning cities for no real reason. They're not building any new ones. They're not trying to win. They're doing it just to burn the world down. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um. I'm, I'm calling it now. There will be an Antifa guild. I'm just, I'm just calling it now. 
Oh, I'm sure definitely. it'll get its name changed, but there will be a troll guild called Antifa or something. They'll go around burning cities. For sure, for sure. Or oh, something um, even worse than that. Yeah, but I mean, is, yeah. So basically, I want to see if the these systems will support life within it. Mm-hmm. You know, will will all these things tie together? You know, leveling. Right. Uh, there's a lot of questions I have. Leveling. Will you be able to go out level? How about you know the higher levels and lower levels? Right. How about just mm-hmm logging in every single day is it going to be something like a you know they said no daily quests okay cool what are you going to do then what's the rate of Mm -hmm. exp gain what's the you know can you truly do everything you know to kind of vary up your leveling experience or is it just going to actually be a grind fest where you stick in one area you know kill a mob eight thousand times and then move on to another area and kind of shift up based on house things yeah sorry and we talked about no 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 i just i was letting you know i had a follow-up to that and it's Mm -hmm. very true with no daily quest that is something that's interesting but you i i also want to see how the system works with no degradation because again Mm -hmm. like you said about the when you mentioned about staying in one area trying to sit and work on a node it's very true because depending on how that system integrates with no degradation and how the city are you going to have to stay in an area yeah. Like, are you going to be like, in order to maintain, does it require a certain amount or is it going to be something where, you, and, and this is something that is important to me because some people are like, oh, I hate node deck. No, that's a good thing, yep. but it needs, they need to find a, a, and this is getting the system to work. They need to find that fine balance where it's not, you forget about it because it's so, you know, five people doing one quest, you're, yeah. you're maxed out for a month. That's not going to do anything. You know, that's like paying your taxes mm. in Dark Age of Camelot for your house to yep. platinum for a year. And you're like, well, it took me about 30 minutes in the high end dungeon to earn two plat. And now my house will not degrade for a year. You know, yeah. like there, there's those issues where it either is too strong, like it was in the original, like New World and things of that nature, where if you're literally not looking at stuff every single day, yeah. it's a pile of ashes. To the point where it's almost a fire and forget system. It's kind of like ESO is doing an event right now. Uh, everyone has to go out and do things, right? And if everyone does a certain amount of things, uh, it'll unlock all these rewards, right? Um, yeah. For everyone. Cool system. I like it. And I'm imagining it's similar to that. But I've never one time seen it be scaled to the point where people are going to like the final day going, everyone, do daily quest. We haven't hit the final thing. No. It happens yeah, like a week. Crush it. Yeah, like we got a month long event and everyone maxed it out in like three days. You know, like it's never yeah, scaled yeah. Pop properly. Like I haven't logged in. I've not done a single thing for this event, but I know because I have an active standing good account that I will have that house when it comes out because I just mm-hmm. know the event will be done. Yeah. Because there's not yeah. a personal progression and it's not tuned to the point where it's difficult to do. And that's a system that I'm concerned about because I really do feel like what's going to happen is as long as there's players there, and I mean literally like three players there, there will be no degradation. And Mm. then what's the point of even happening? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Mm. And the other thing is I've seen them play these systems, right? I've seen the the nodes build. Mm. But I'm going to be frank with you. And I know it's early. So, Steven, don't hate me. But you know this, too. When it just pops into existence, that it's so gamey. Like I kind of want to see, like when you're working on stuff, like NPCs nah. actively building, making the world feel alive. Not all of a sudden there's a notification and you went from a hut to a you, the house is magically yep. appear. Yeah, there's ways you can do that, it, and, and it makes the world feel alive. It, it doesn't make the world feel alive. It makes you feel like you're playing. Um, Candy Crush Saga or something like that. All of a sudden, you mm. drag your thing on top of the other thing, and now it's a tier two. You know, it, at yeah. the very least, you have um a, a middle stage. So you have your stage two. And then the middle stage lasts for let's say twenty four hours, and that middle stage you see workers walking around the town, and you see yeah. buildings in partial repair. And then let's say after that twenty four hours later, boom, it can pop to tier three, whatever. Mm. But at least you've got that little middle section where it seems like people are trying to build this place up. Right. Yeah. But we've not seen that. No. Everything they've done, as soon as they've done something and it turned over, it's just it flipped the switch and all. It's like hitting a phase in any other when game watched, where all of a sudden everything's on yeah. fire or it's not. Yeah. When, and the gameplay footage Steven gave us of the last Alpha test that he put on the YouTube channel, they mm-hmm. showed a building being erected. And the building was erected. You can see the ra- the, the walls go up and the rafters go up. That was very cool. I said uh, in a stream talking about it yeah. was, 
the next level of that in terms of realism would be having NPCs, like you mentioned, walking around and ha doing the hammering and doing the building. That's the next level and of that. Maybe it should be timed. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because that was, that was maybe sped up, but maybe to time it down. Like, if it takes 24 hours, let it slowly start developing over hour. 24 hours. Like, or a real hour yeah. in, in real time of uh, if that thing being built would be kind of cool. Yeah. That's and, really something like yeah. that. And I know some people will think that's stupid, but let's face it. The lifeblood of an MMO is the fact that it feels like a world, yeah. not that it's a game. The second Immersed, it becomes a game, invested. It, it, people lose interest. You know, That's the not, complaint about WoW. Yeah. That's the complaint about WoW. It feels too mm. much like a, a theme park, and not enough like a, a living, breathing world. Right. For those right. that you don't to, like that kind of thing. Yeah. You go to a zone, it's like, I have no attachment because it's just instance A. Instance A will be yep. gone as soon as I move to instance B. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, what I want to see. Did you? Yeah, I was say I got this. So again, Stephen gave us some footage, and we saw three classes in the last alpha test, which was like the tank type, the healer type, and the spellcaster type. I would like to see uh, more of the base classes ready for alpha one. Um, Why did I let you go first? I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Now I got nothing to say. Now I got to figure out something to say in the meantime. I'll give you some time. So I'm pretty sure we, we, we might be able to see some of the more simple base classes. The, the Ranger, the Rogue, uh, maybe the Fighter. Those are much more simpler to implement. Um, there's two base classes that kind of scare me in terms of their development. And that's going to be the Bard and the Summoner. Because those mm -hmm. concepts are very interesting, very unique. And because they're so unique, there's not a whole lot of examples to pull from to try and, and create these things. Um, how much damage is the bar going to do? How much buffing is it going to do? How much healing, right? The summoner, what are those pets going to do? There's a lot of decisions to be made there. So I don't know if we'll have those classes ready anytime soon. I'd love to at least see the fighter, the ranger, and the rogue in this next playtest. Because those aren't overly complicated to balance and design initially. And it's true because you're right. Not many modern games have bards and summoners. What was last? Uh, yep. Final Fantasy XIV have a bard? It Yes, yes they have Barth and Summoner. They're mm. the, one of the few that actually mm -hmm. do. Mm. The, the next game that actually has a Barth that I can even remember was Dark Age of Camelot. And Jeez. you know what they did? Nothing. Exactly. They literally were buff bots. They put <laughs> yeah. them on auto-follow. They played <laughs> yeah. their song of movement. Do, 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 and they ran around wow. behind the guy on auto-follow and provided speed boost to everyone. I'm legit. I wish. Give me one. I know the developers have said no add-ons. I don't care. I want one. One. I want to change, because they mentioned the bard having a movement or a song mm -hmm. thing in this game. I want an add-on that lets me change whatever stupid song the bard plays for his movement into Lucio's speed boost song from Overwatch. I want that piece of music to be my movement <laughs> speed song that I play. That's it. That's all. Just Lucio's, because I'm an Overwatch fan. Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings Online allows people Ooh. to actually play music and they yes. play stuff like Enter the Sandman. I want to see flames actually, and yeah, I would yeah. love to see if Bard, if you were good at it, like you can play pre-done songs. But if you're good, you can actually play music. Like upload an MP3 to to use mm -hmm. in that. No, Except, not even upload an MP3. Like literally, no, he's talking play about just actually play. The notes. Key presses like one Key through zero to play like, notes. Yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be great. Yeah, people do that. In I saw them do it in Guild Wars too because they had this uh, holiday bell. That had eight yeah. keys, so eight different notes, and you had people lined up. They were doing concerts. That's cool. And it was like, whoa. That's fun. Like, it's neat to see. Yeah, um, fun suck. All right. So now that you gave me some time to think about it, I want to see how the nodes interact with, like, more fleshed out what benefits mm. the nodes actually provide. Like, the fighting node, or, you know, the military node right, versus the, the divine node. Like, I actually want to see, because right now we don't know. Like, yeah, we have characters mm. running around. But I want to see the beginnings of what the node, like when it becomes a, a divine node, what's going to yeah. happen? Like what kind of services and what sort of, like, because it's from a very conceptual level, but how's it going to play out? How's it going to actually benefit players? I mm. want to see that at least beginning start to appear. Mm. Up here. Um, mm. And I'd also like to see uh, how the, the node system works because they already told us they had however many nodes, I forget, 119. I might be wrong on that number. Uh, it's been a long one, time. It was an odd Something. number. 103? No, no. It no, wasn't it was divisible by four. It, it's more than that because it's including the uh, castle nodes. I think uh, uh, a jealous is closer. I forgot how many. I, I don't Maybe. remember the exact number, but it, it's somewhere along those lines. Okay. But they said they're all predetermined already. Unless they change their mind, they're not randomized. Yeah. 
Right. So I'm curious how the uh like cuz I'm assuming based on the fact you have nodes they're not going to limit nodes going well on this coast is only military nodes. There's probably four nodes along the coast. Mm-hmm. How does that line up? Like I have a feeling that each uh zone of influence has one of every node type. And how does the experience get divided to the right nodes? Like is it proximity only? Is it the type of activity you're doing? I want to see how that grows so that way we know like because if you're trying to build a specific guild, you obviously want a node that favors what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. So that way you have the benefits. You have an area that you want to go to, that you want to build for whatever reason, whether it's ease of access, uh, for whatever the point would be, uh, aesthetics, whatever. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure you get the node you want. I want to know how that works. I want to know so... how experience is, is divided among the nodes and which one pops up first. Is that random? Is it you know, proximity. We've had this discussion and I am with you in what you want to say. I want maximum player agency. If I want my guild to go right there by that river near those woods, I want a military node there because it's strategic or or a merchant node because I want to sell things up river and go in the ocean. I want it right there. I want to put it there. Yeah. But according to what we're starting to understand is these four types of nodes are sprinkled in these 103 locations all across the map yep. and yep. have their own zone of influence. And if you do anything inside that zone, that specific node in that specific spot is going to pop up and there's no player agency. Locations are decided and you need to just hope that the area you're in is the right node that you want. I'm really hoping they, they go back on that because we had, the, I know we to. had that discussion. Me too. Along, because you know what's going to happen? Player. Agents. Two weeks, there will be a wiki with little dots on a map yep. saying military. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, oh, for everyone sure. Everyone will know. No, that's going to come up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it'll just form a meta. And then, and then if you had that, like you said, well, I really want that coastal node so I could be a pirate. And I want it to be military for the, the PvP benefits. Yep. Sorry, that's a merchant node. No, it's that a religious will node. will only ever a, be a, a, whatever. Yeah. Yep. It, it's why, why? Now, like you said, along the coast, you may have the multiple different node types, but not in the right spot. Not the right type in the right spot that works perfectly for you and your guild. Right. Which, and again, especially removes you, our decision making. Right. And if someone puts, like, upriver, they do a, an economic node, right? Big yeah. metropolis. Well, mm-hmm. why would I not want a military node at, the, at the, the mouth of the river that they have to exit so that I can raid all of their <laughs> ships as they come <laughs> Or out? a vassal to that to defend it from people coming in. Like, there's lots of decisions there. But no, we don't get that kind of player agency. No, there's only one decision. That's to burn the ships. But I get what you're saying. <laughs> Agelos, have you seen the map? You've seen the map. Yeah. You've yeah, seen I've the world map. That big yeah, old yeah. stretch of water down the middle separating the oh. continents. Oh, dude. I'm going to be a pirate. I'm going to be a pirate. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to say I now, I've seen the map before anyone else. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. But the only no. problem with the full, the maximum flexibility model, the maximum, where you're in any of the 103 spots, could be any of the four node types. And Developing each stage of each node type from village to metropolis for all 103 locations. Right. And that's Blah. actually what I, I disliked Blah. about New World. You were able yep. to do that. Now you can't. It's all predefined areas. Mm. And that, oh, you mean that, choosing how to build? Yeah, choosing how to build. Yeah, what you wanted to put in the in the fort and everything. Now it's all predefined. It's like, well, I like the player agency. I like the choice of choosing what I wanted inside our area. And now, well, we don't so have far, that. still, Ash uh, wants yeah. the mayor to be able to decide buildings within the node. Right, not, maybe not all buildings, but there'd be some flexibility for some building decisions by the mayor. But as for what node and what spot, apparently it's locked in place. Right. Oh, for really development, it makes that. sense. Yeah, but I want, like you said, I want total control. I mean, really, what is the... Even if you want to make it simple, why not just do a drop down when the node levels? I mean, yeah, I guess it makes an annoyance kind of thing, but uh, whoever claims the node, like Mm -hmm. A node pops up. Someone can claim it at one. Someone probably will. And it's like, Mm -hmm. what do you want this to be? And let them choose. Mm -hmm. Even if it's that, like, what's the difference? Why do you need to program it? What does that matter? The largest Mm -hmm. guild in the area, the guild master decides. Eh. It would be whoever claimed. Because remember, when they go to the node, someone can 
get in. Yeah. And maybe it cha- like why can't you change the node? Mm-hmm. Like why can't you change like even if it becomes a a a, a I don't know, uh a, a military node or a merchant node we'll say uh and you, you know move what? in. Yeah. And then I- like as it levels up you hit take 3 and go, "You know what? We're going to have a we're going to have like a religious fervor in here and all the priests are going to kick out all the merchants, you know." And you know and what? There they all go. And we already do it. that. We do that on a racial level. Yeah. If there was a level three dwarf node and a bunch of elves move in, it becomes a level four dwarf elf node. The entire yeah. one, all the old stuff buried to the ground and the whole bloody node's now elf. Even, mm. even if it's a choice, like ma- ma- make it a risk versus reward choice. For the time period that you're doing the change, you lose all benefits. You, you're, you're like vulnerable to it. Att- whatever. Or, like, hmm. or if it's a level three uh, uh, merchant and you want a, a scientific, Maybe you level it up to four, and it becomes a level three scientific. You reset the level. You hit level. You go up to the cap. Boom! We're about to hit four. You want a scientific? No, nope, back down to three. And do it again. Yeah, but make it's it scientific a, now. Yeah, make it a a a, a risk to do yep. it. Like it's going to cost something. Yeah, you're going to have something. to level the node up. You won't gain again. that level, but it'll reset it. You know, yep. so you'll have to earn the whole level again. Yep. That's that's fine. Yep, I would be okay with that. Like having yeah. the player agency to make that change. Um, and you know what? It could even be. It could even be. Uh, like I said earlier, when you do that flip, maybe all the people leave and the new people are coming in. Make that mm-hmm. a flag for uh, NPC events. Like monsters yeah. start attacking. So for the next twenty four hours, you have to defend, or you're going to de level. You know that could be a kicked off event, or um, you you turn on your PvP flag for that mm-hmm. zone for twenty four hours. You have to defend it, or they can de level you while you're trying to switch. I think the developers are a little afraid of a hardcore meta forming potentially on some servers, especially like YouTube or streamer servers, where people are like, you know what? The scientific node teleport between nodes is really useful. How about lots of scientific nodes all over the map? Zip, zip, doop, 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 doop. That's like, already going to happen because of the preset nodes. But if there's They'll 103 fig- nodes and they're split evenly between all four types, there's only a certain number of scientifics on that at any one point in time. Yeah. As opposed yeah. to like, is 25% scientific as opposed to like maybe 50% or 60% scientific. Right. But what they'll do is they'll figure out the best case scenario of node one, node 30, they match. And if Mm. you then do node 60, guess what? That's a direct line. If you do node 93, there you go. Now you got nodes all, you know, north, south, east, west. Like that's what's going to happen. They'll, Mm. they'll find the nodes that all connect together or at least are at the maximum extendable range Yep. And go, that scientific levels up, that one levels up, that levels up, that level that way mm-hmm. we have fast travel all over Vera. Jeez. I hope not. I hope not. And and that's what happens when you have a preset meta. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it could happen with the changing nodes too. Like absolutely people could do it, but someone who doesn't want to follow the meta can make a change. You know, that yep. one guild who just wants to break everything can wants to watch change. the world burn. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Oh wow, we're actually starting to run out of time already. <laughs> We've awesome. covered like one Ashes topic. Well, uh, you know what happens when you get me on here. So yeah, let's go yeah, ahead yeah. and move on to the next thing. Pax panel, uh, the future of online gaming. We had the one and only Stephen and Margaret. They were there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let Alpha Soul, even though he's now somehow darker than he was mm-hmm. before. It's that light there. behind me. What happened is <laughs> yeah. I gotta. <laughs> If my head covers, then it, like, you know, displays yeah. it. But if not, then I become part of the shadows. So, yeah. there we go. <laughs> he he right, so. uh, He's playing the Rogue Rogue, and he was literally just activating his blend into the shadows ability yep. and just disappeared. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. So, the so the PAX Online, um, I, I was able to come into it for about, I'd probably say, like, half of the time, to- half an hour. And I think we kind of touched on this in the pregame show, but the main topic that they were talking about was a, a, was um, the future of MMO gaming and online gaming. And each of the developers all kind of got a chance to talk about, you know, their specific game for a bit. And they also got to, you know, talk about some aspects of their game versus, you know, what they think the future is going to bring. Um, I think one thing that you pointed out, Jels, in this was, uh, which ended up kind of happening is each game kind of not so subtly or subtly kind of pushes their game, if you will, with the future 
of what game is going to be. They talk a little bit about the past and they talk a little bit about, you know, future and where they kind of think it's going to end up heading. Now, the panel had uh, Pantheon, Ashes of Creation, Amazon Studios, and Crowfall uh, dev. Can, can we take uh, one second yeah, yeah. as a, like, a moment of silence for Brad McQuaid, who passed away? Oh. Yeah. He was the head yeah. of... That was, that was several months ago, but since you said Pantheon, it kind of hits hard, because he was the brainchild of that thing, and he died. And he was young, too. He was 40-something. Yeah. He, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was like 40 something. He was super young. So I'm actually, who did they actually have if it wasn't Brad McQuaid? No, no, he was 50. 50. Yeah. That's I'm 34, that's Alpha. You're not, you're, you're, you're pretty close to that too, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's 10 that's more clo- years. Yeah. L- l- let's put it that way. We're closer to that than we are to 20. <laughs> that's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, so no, that that's sad for Brad. So I'm yeah. actually real. That game, I think, had some other issues, specifically with some design decisions, which I think it would only ever be niche. But he was the driving force behind that thing. I I do have a lot of fear for that one, just because that was his passion project. Mm. What's gonna prevent what what that held him? What's going to hold these other guys into that game? Because they're in it for a paycheck, but they're not going to get massive amount of money. They know this is niche, you know? Mm, like, yeah. They have the love of it. Yep. Anyway, all right, continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, but I mean, that's that's basically it. They um, Margaret headed up the uh, discussion, uh, and they each just talked about different areas where, you know, um, uh, they think Ashes, or not Ashes of Creation, but they think, that the online gaming industry is MMO games specifically are heading. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. They talked a lot about WoW as well, too, if I recall. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I don't know if you can actually have an MMO discussion in the past 20 years without mentioning World of Warcraft. You have to. It's, it's, not it's the elephant in the room. It's the behemoth. It's, it's mm. the giant in your... Uh, it's Goliath in your David. Right? That's what it is. Yeah. And... You- as much as people hate on it, I am, I'm, I'm going to say this. The reason it does so well is because it, it, it's developed well. It works. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, there's been so many times when new systems come out in other games, it's buggy for a long time. Like, it's, it's just smooth. Like, yeah. Everything you do, it, it's, it's developed well, uh, plays well, it's buttery smooth. The control, and this is something that kills games, MMO specifically, control schemes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, I'm trying to think of the whole thing, but yeah, if your combat's not good, even for tab target, even mo- modern tab target, there's not much you can say about World of Warcraft that it's not like, even for tab target, it's good. And they hide yeah. the fact that it feels like tab. Mm-hmm. Like yep. they do. It feels almost action-y in a way. I mean, it doesn't even need to a lot be complicated. Of it needs hmm. to be smooth. It's got to feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta be but a that tactile feel. Mm-hmm. Even so, with I think, that, I th- sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're. I was gonna say, even so, with that, yeah, it it feels great. But I think WoW also they understood and still get the concept that a game is a game, right? Mm-hmm. I, I I think a lot of companies tend to forget that and will institute systems where it's a great concept. And it works really well for a couple people, but then the vast majority of people, you know, maybe consume it once or twice, and then they're like, I can't be bothered with this anymore. And then they target is go away from it away. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it, even my favorite game I'm playing right now, it, it's, it's glad, I'm glad you said that, is uh, Mordal. I love that game. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's so complicated. So complicated. Mm-hmm. Like, the combat is so, the skill styling is so high that it hasn't gained critical mass, not because it doesn't play well. It plays amazingly, but it's mm. too hard to be good for the average player. Mm. And because you talked about systems that, that just work for a small amount of people, there are a small amount of people in that game who are, uh, Crowjack and I made the comparison earlier, uh, Sauron in the first Lord of the Rings <laughs> movie where he comes in and just smashes people smashes with his people. mace. Yeah. yeah, like he's got like twenty <laughs> people in front of him. That's how yep. a good player in Mordow is. Like, wow, 
You, yeah. saw, you don't even know how they do what they do. Yep. Um, I, I actually had a friend who he was trying to teach me how to play, and he was very, very good. Like He was actually invited to a pro team, but he was too young at the mm. time, so he didn't get in. Mm. He, he, we did a, a Discord session, and he took his webcam, and he faced it down at his hands so he yep. could see what I was doing. I'm sitting there going, I don't think my hands move that way. Like yeah. He was just yeah. that good. I, it amazed me how he was moving and how he was doing all these attacks. Mm. But the problem is, he's that top 1%. Yep. Yeah. Own my butt every time. I think I killed him one time. I clipped it in a scream and I still have it because it's the only time it's ever happened and I love it. <laughs> I keep bringing it up. He and the hardcore been... gamer is going to love that. The hardcore is going to love that. But, but yeah. no one else will. Not the casual. No. Yeah. And, and that's the problem with the Mordal scene right now. And not saying it, it's terrible. There's like 2,000 people playing at peak. It's easy to find games. But there's not the mass appeal because people go in, they play it, they realize it's, wow, this is way beyond what I can do. And this works with systems too. And they leave mm-hmm. because they don't like getting stomped. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of a, a shooter I used to play back when I was a teenager called Guns Online. It was a Korean shooter, third person. And its mechanics were so interesting because um, you can negate animation. So if you jump off a wall and fall, you couldn't do anything until you hit the ground. If you slashed your sword, you could dash back at the wall again and then jump off of it again. And if you switched weapons, you could reload quicker or shoot quicker. And long story short, because of these mechanics, you would be pushing about between 7 and 11 buttons a second to be zooming around the map like a, like a Super Saiyan, shooting mm. guns and pulling out swords and dashing and flying through the map. Very fun if you knew how to play, but the casual player watching this happen is just like... Mm. Which is like ESO games like had Fortnite. the same problem. Yep. Animation canceling was meta. If you wanted to do any of the trials... BDO, like... Oh, yeah, yes. that's right. I remember that. Animation yeah. canceling is something yep. you had to do. Mm-hmm. This, this wasn't... There were literally fights that were tuned because people were doing that. They had to yep. tune them for animation canceling. If you were not mm-hmm. animation canceling in ESO, you were not able to do enough DPS to actually do the hard raids ever. Just like World of Warcraft had to escalate their dungeon difficulty because everyone started running dungeon boss mods. Mm-hmm. Because dungeon boss mods mm-hmm. rendered things like Molten Core super easy. So they started to escalate, escalate, escalate dungeon difficulty and boss mods got smarter and smarter and became this thing where if you didn't have boss mods, you couldn't even do the fights for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These kinds of things are bad. Bad for the casual That's why gamer. they started introducing story modes yep. into yep. raids and stuff because they realized yep. we can't keep our hardcore audience without upping the difficulty to the level where our casual audience can't keep up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, you're right. There are issues with systems. and So, Ash is a creation. Good luck with all, all saying all this. You know what? We've talked about this briefly. Um, I'm hoping that Ash is a creation just simplifies their combat and goes tab targeting and doesn't try and reinvent the wheel. If they, de- we, mm-hmm. Alf and I talked about this. If they decide that their attempt at a hybrid between combat, action combat and tab target doesn't work, they just just make it a really good tab targeting game because everyone can do that. Everyone can play it. Everyone knows it. It's it's nice. It feels good. Have a good one. And for and for an MMO, works. I, I'm sorry that that it will works. have mass appeal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've said that from the beginning. Like I like action for a lot of stuff, but as I was playing, yeah. I'm like, I think tab is the way to go. Like period. Mm-hmm. Like I know, I know we had a lot of people early on in the community who were like, no action or bust. I get it. I sure. get it. But the fact is. It will be niche if it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even BDO wasn't full action. It was iframes. Everything was iframes. It was also like, tab hidden as action. Like, come on. It, yeah, that's exactly right. It's tab hidden as action. There was no projectile. There were, no, there were, there was were no nothing like that. It was hit scan. Exactly. Well, yeah. no, it's not hit scan. Hit scan means you have to actually physically point on your head, and click it, and hit it. As the archer, for example, soft if lock. you were in a 45 soft degree lock, cone yeah. in front of me, I was, yeah, it's a soft lock. Like I said, it's tab targeting mass as action. It's a soft yeah. lock. ESO yeah. does the same thing with range. Yep. Soft as long as you're pointing in that 45 degree, you're hitting the target. Your yeah. your fireball does whoop, you know, which is easy. Yeah, yeah, it, it does that. And th- guess what? I mean, ESO is one of the top games right now. Yep, it's yeah. tab target disguised as action. Yep. Warcraft. Yep, full um, tab. 
Yeah. I mean, there's, you know what game was full action? Uh, oh, uh, Dark Fall. Tara? No, Dark Fall. Dark, Dark Fall. Fall Online. That had I play projectiles. That it like arrows were actually physical projectiles in the world. Spells were physical projectiles really? in the world. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Everything. That was pure action combat. I want a boom headshot with a fireball. I want to be able to actually point and click, hit scan, hit somebody with a fireball. That'd be great. It would just feel like firing a rocket in any other like first person shooter though. So it'd feel like probably. Probably. But then you also have the issue of the second you add that into your game and someone gets good at it, oh, yeah. therein lies your skill ceiling problem we talked, again. We talked that. Yep. The second Me you're a casual a player, all tab target gets headshot with an arrow and you die instantly because it was a critical hit. Yep. Yeah, if it's a full action game. game and there's headshot damage, I'm playing a ranger versus average Andy playing a ranger, I'm destroying average Andy. Just annihilating. Not only that, that, but you know what's going to happen? The meta is going to change. There's not going to be any melee. Oh, oh! Hey, how would you what, aim what, as an melee? You don't. What What was the number one class combination in, in Arc Age? Oh, it was Arc-age. all archers. Arch Age. It was all range. Yeah. Arch-age. It was all range. Yeah. Yep. It, there was no melee. Now it, I've been out of it for a while, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it, if you wanted to do competitive, there was no melee in competitive PvP. Mm-hmm. It was two archer groups or magic casters shooting back and forth at each other. That's what it was. Yep. There was no melee. Period. Melee was reserved for the PvE content while you're questing. And then when you mm-hmm. got to max level and want to do PvP, you switched to some archer or mage. That's what you did. And considering this game is going to be um, big groups on big groups, I'm afraid we're going to see that too. Yeah. Just from a balance. Yeah, the meta will be because- ranged everything. In the beginning of the sieges, lots of archers, lots of mages. That's right. usually know, we'll how see. it winds up. Well, yeah, like, common sense. In, yeah, in group battles, that's usually how it winds up. Mm. Well, before we actually end the show, because we are starting to get close to that hour mark, mm. do you guys actually do the uh, the section five uh, of our notes? Mm, section five. No, we don't. Oh, well then. I don't know. I, I guess I guess that's going to be the end of the show then because I think we're going to hear in exactly about one hour. Oh, that's true. So, yeah. All right. So, here we go. Final thoughts, guys. Crow. Final go. thoughts. Oh. Oh, me go first? Um, God. I, I know that, luckily, Alpha 1 is going to be a relatively speaking shorter testing session and Alpha 2 is going to be the meat and potatoes of testing. I'm hoping that throughout the course of Alpha 2, these developers will, will, will decide whether they're going to do the action hybrid combat system or, or abort and go full tap target, whether they're going to give us player agency over uh, nodes or not, and they're going to make the decisions that are best for the game and best for the community. I'm hoping that they made the right decisions. Hmm. Go ahead, Alpha. I think for me, I, you know, just kind of like I mentioned, I'm really just looking to see how all of these systems meld together like mm. does the does this summary of a bunch of great you know sounding systems does this produce a great game right uh and you know how they will tinker as such you know so we'll see uh, i can't wait to get into the next test let's see what they changed before and then into alpha one so yeah well my final thoughts were it was just fun doing a show with you guys <laughs> you're welcome back at any time in fact we insist yeah so I, I've just been guest hosting for this week Storms wasn't here and I'm like you know what I'm here I'll do it it was fun <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my voice again maybe I'll come back in the future we'll see uh, but yeah it was, you'll it come was back a lot whenever there's like really good juicy news and when it's a boring week you're like yeah I'm not feeling it this week guys yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do something else. Yeah, yeah. Come down with some board. <laughs> yeah, as I, I see Ark in chat this week. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Satana, that silky smooth voice. Great having you, Joss. You guys are awesome. Thank you, guys, chat. You guys are fantastic. I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. I do enjoy doing this curated content like this, though. This is something that yeah. I was always really fond of doing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, I, t- I tend to have a little bit more issues when I have to be a little bit more free form. I can think kind of on my feet, but there's still points where I'm sitting there with my mouth hanging open going, <laughs> uh, practice, just practice. Uh, I know. I, but see, I, I also have that thing is I, because of doing podcasts for so long, I hate dead air. I can't mm. have it. <laughs> yeah. As a YouTuber going to the Twitch scene, you're right. I feel like I must be talking all the time. Must be feeling silence. My energy must be up here. Right, so after an hour, mm-hmm. almost suddenly I'm down here, and I'm like, uh, uh, "This is not good." But a Twitch streamer, right. like the OGs, they'll go for like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, a minute of saying nothing and just playing. And I'm like, "What? What? What, what is this? It's weird. It's a different universe." Ag breathing in the mic is our new show line. You can't hear me. <laughs> He's got some mouth mic. noises, that man. <laughs> uh. You can't hear me breathing in this mic. If I am, no. I'm doing it on purpose. Yeah. I can't. Hey, I, I these guys, I tell you what. Anyway, all right. Where can people find you? Let's go, Crow Jack. Let people know where you are. You can find me on YouTube at KRO. That's where I'm predominantly right now. Once Ash the Creation is streamable, we'll see if I can and can can wrench some time. Kind of 30 hour days. Uh, I, can you just make the days 30 hours long, please? I was 33. thinking the exact same thing. Just more time, please. It'd be great. Yeah. You know, uh, actually, K- oh, oh, on YouTube. you know what's actually funny? It, when you said that, it reminded me of, you ever watch American Dad? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember yeah. when he found the CIA pills that made it yep. so you could take the pill and never sleep, but it made you yep. feel right? He's like, I'm not, oh my God, yes. I'm just well rested. So yeah. he's up all night long doing all this stuff. Like when everyone else please. is in bed from like midnight to like <laughs> 6 a.m., that's yeah. just his time to do whatever. He's like learning to paint and. Oh my god, yes, please. I need those pills. Just yeah. oh, I'm not I'm not wired. I'm just well rested. Well rested. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Alpha, where can people find you? Yeah, I can be found mainly on YouTube. Uh if you go to youtube.com slash alpha soul, you will find me and the videos that I make. Mm-hmm. All right, that's nice and easy. Yeah. I actually wasn't gonna plug my channel, but Ark is yelling at me to do so. Do it. Um, <laughs> the screaming you can every find day. me on. on my new YouTube a, a Jealous AM, ASMR because that's what... No, I'm just kidding. That's not a thing. <laughs> uh, that is definitely not a thing. Um, but no, I actually am doing streaming again and I'm actually trying to make a at least a part-time career of this thing now. So you can find me over at twitch.tv slash Jealous underscore DCN and there is an accompanying YouTube channel. You can give that a follow. I would really appreciate it if you did, both the Twitch channel and the YouTube, even though YouTube doesn't have anything on it yet because I have to start making content. And mm-hmm. that means I actually have to do work, in which mm-hmm. case I'm going to bug Crowjack like crazy mm-hmm. to either teach me to do stuff or to develop those pills so I have time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Cause I'm still, and I, it's so funny when you talked about that. Cause yeah, I've been trying to do four hour streaming things a night and I'll tell you what, keeping that hype up and that talking up. You'd be better off doing two hour streams and then spending two hours making videos. You'd be be better off doing that. That might be what I, you'd be better off. That might, might might be what I end up. Keep your energy up for two hours and then two hours of making a video. Yes, that sounds like a that's a winner there. But yeah, if you want to check me out there, twitch.tv slash jealous underscore DCN. I uh, would really appreciate that. You guys are all amazing. And, uh, and thank you so much for having me on the show. You can follow everything these guys do over at dungeoncrawlernetwork.com. There you'll find links to all their social media, including Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord. Be sure to check out their Patreon program at patreon.com slash dungeoncrawlernetwork. And if you want to help support the show, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes so people know this is a real podcast that we say real words. Sometimes they matter. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of From the Ashes, and we'll see you next time.